Back in October, a man called Conor McGregor launched his own line of Irish whiskey. And I didn't know about this because I don't know who Conor McGregor is. But apparently he's a fighter or something and he had a match. Is it called a match when you fight? A fight in October. And he released this whiskey. This is Proper 12 triple distilled Irish whiskey. And you'll notice it's in a little sample thing. I'm not gonna lie, I was not gonna invest in a full bottle of this because to be bluntly honest, I've had a look at this and it's, I've not heard the best thing. I wanna make up my own mind on it, but I've not heard great things about it. So I've got a friend who's got a bottle and I was like, right, well, I've done a load of reviews of like miniature bottles. Uh, here's another example over here. So I'll just bring over one of my empties and fill it up using your supply. And they did warn me that it's, Mmm, not the best whiskey in the world. Let's let's put it that way. Even so, I'm intrigued to see what this is all about. Um, because I don't have the bottle in front of me, I'm gonna be using the website to read up a bit about what this is and kind of what the story is behind it. Proper number 12 triple distilled Irish whiskey is the ultra smooth blend of golden grain and single malt with hints of vanilla, honey, and toasted wood for a rich complexity. And there is a smiling man with a beard. I'm gonna assume that's Conor McGregor from a proper Irishman. Okay, well, I've just learned he's Irish at least, that's something. Proper number 12 pays homage to our founder, Conor McGregor, and his neighborhood of Crumlin, Dublin 12. It embodies their shared spirit of brotherhood, loyalty, and hard work. As Conor says, it is a proper Irish whiskey, and 12 is my hometown. How, how is 12 a place? Now then, from what I've heard, um, this is made at the Bushmills Distillery, and I should be expecting something that's quite young. Um, I would be surprised if this is older than three years. I've never understood people that pay good money to watch two people beat the crap out of each other, when you could just go down to a council estate in Manchester and watch it all for free. I half kind of want to leave this to breathe for a minute, because I think it's probably going to need the help, but we'll give it a nose anyway and kind of see if we pick up on any of that vanilla or wood or blood or any of that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh that's sharp. Oh, my God. That is acetone. That's that's nail polish remover right there. Or if anyone's ever sniffed a magic marker, it's that kind of sharp fume smell. It's fumey. It's young. It's a very young whiskey, this one. Okay, enough beating around the bush. Yeah, <laughs> bush. It's from Bush Mills. That's funny. Oh, oh, oh. At the last second, it kind of redeemed itself on the finish, but wow, that is, that is sharp, lads. Bit of toasted oak, bit of vanilla. There's a sweetness towards the end of that. I think a little bit fruity as well, but there's just this wave of like, methylated spirits and brake fluid at like the forefront of it that just and it lingers it won't go away the flavoring components of it what there is do you know what it's fairly prevalent there's a fair bit there but there's just this wave of fumes that just will not go away in fact as i'm talking it's still like the predominant thing that is there it's just um it's just ethanol if you are drinking this as part of a fight i mean the fight was like four months ago but i've heard that this guy's not dead so he might have another one in the future if you're drinking this as part of a fight i'm sure it's a test of manliness or some other such but yeah, there's nicer whiskies out there. There's nicer Irish whiskies. Here's another reason why I didn't buy a bottle of this. It is more or less the same price on Master Malt at the minute as Redbreast 12. And I've heard nothing but stunning compliments about Redbreast 12. And I've heard nothing but middling to poor reviews about this one. So rather than spend my money on it, I just thought, fuck it. At least that way I can say I've tried it. I would maybe recommend trying this as a whiskey and mixer. Or as part of a cocktail as like the booze component. Have it as that you're probably not gonna go too far astray, but on its own as a whiskey, just to sip, I'd give it a miss over favor of pretty much anything else, to be honest. Um, Rowan Co is an Irish whiskey that's been on the market for a couple of years now, fairly good. Even Jameson's, like, I've got the Jameson's cask mates there. Um, I was sipping that neat over summer in, uh, in Ireland, and I was quite enjoying that, so there are good sipping whiskies out there. I wouldn't say that this is one of them. If you do have a bottle of this open, and you've tried some already, and you're just like, holy crap, what am I going to do with this? Maybe try leaving the lid off it for a bit, because you'll be surprised how much introducing a bit of air into the bottle can help a whiskey. And this needs all the help it can fucking get.